Hello YouTube. It is the 11th of November 2013. My name is Stephen Hartley. I'm speaking from Banbury in the United Kingdom. That is, I think of it as England. And I want to say something about where we live and I'm going to state here in this YouTube video an answer to the problem that everyone admits democracy is a load of shit but that it's the best political system we've had so far. Well, I want to come up with this new way, which you could also say it's an old way, a better way, and we could do it, right? You know, we could just, we, if we are in a democracy, we could all vote for this thing that I'm going to say, which is basically no rule, and um, and yeah, it could be really good. It could be, it's the only answer. <laughs> Quite simply, it is the only answer. <clears throat> okay, you're going to see something on screen, which is a doodle. It's not do well. It's yeah, it's about half an hour ish, sort of just a bit of a brainstorm, as in truth and lies. And um, well. Start with a uh, start with a bit of truth. Um, actually, if you look, this is where I started it. So the first thing I wrote down was whether weirding over on the left there. Uh, whether weirding is truth. I think we can all agree that weather has got weird locally. That people talk about it locally. Um, the seasons aren't very well defined anymore. Uh, we get temperature increases and drops of about twenty degrees. So in you know in the middle of winter you can suddenly have a quite a mild period, and then boop back to freezing again. Same in the summer, you can have a freezing August, as we did a couple of years ago weather weirding on that scale and then we're seeing records being broken left right center um that is the truth i think then i wrote mass animal deaths this is a truth it's in photos of many different areas different types of animals these mass die-offs for some reason they just all die that's the truth uh, increased earthquake and volcano activity that is a truth and um, very much so lately I mean it is I remember well at school you know volcanoes were mainly a thing of the past there were a few active ones around um, <clears throat> but we're just seeing them go chaotic at the moment they're all pumping off and this brings me over to the lies and the first one there I wrote was everything that comes out of the government and mass media because it is mostly if it's not lies it's things to sidetrack us just to sort of oh it's so boring the what they call the politics you know cabinet reshuffle or you know and the media would get all hyped up about that we all get maybe get hyped up about that you know, it's pathetic it's like a football team isn't it that's what government has become it's like the two glasgow versus rangers uh you know or the third one coming in <laughs> or man U and liverpool and arsenal and it's it's bollocks they don't do anything. It's better off when they're not there. It would be. <laughs> if they weren't there, 
it would be so much better. Um, so we wouldn't have to be lining their pockets for their future generations, and I'm sure they're all obsessed about how they go down in history. Right. <clears throat> Which, anyway. Okay, and the mass media, you know, they're no bloody good. Um, when did tomorrow's world end? When did that stop? I know I've said this before, but that must have been, you know, that was a depressing day. Um, or time. But the mass media, you know, they do not report the truth. You know, they haven't discussed these vol extra vol you know, it additional volcanoes and things um, chemtrails they've never said anything about that um, so yeah they're obviously under the buckles or whatever so we can't go to them for help leading people like me and lots of others to make YouTube videos just you know you want to just say what you think because no one else is saying it well, there are others on YouTube, but you know, you just can't rely on just other people to do it. If you think something, do it yourself as well. Right, so, okay, back to the truth. So there we go, weather modification chemtrails, okay? I mean, I don't think anyone's still disputing that. You've, you can look at pictures and you must have seen with your own eyes, even if you only rarely go outside. Anyway, look, I know most of the people listening to this are probably already the converted anyway but you know just getting it out there <laughs> as if maybe someone else would listen to this right um i'll just read through the rest of them now public health worsening cancer diabetes stuff like that a mass and uh, uh, increasing wars the truth <laughs> i'll wait for that one Increase in comets and asteroids. I mean, that is a truth as well. Then I got four nice ones here. Before I do those, let's go over to the lies again. Religion. Full of lies. The justice system, say in this country, for example. Um, you know, they'll be those judges will be aware of crimes that people high up have done. And because it never comes into their court, perhaps, don't have to do anything about it. Uh, we all know it's completely corrupt. Everything's corrupt. So, But I've also put here education. So for the masses, the main education is about control. It's just so we can slot into our little allocated areas and perform a function. National Health Service, I mean, they're full of lies. Um because of the fact of you know they're basically like an outlet for the pharmaceuticals and and those people with like weird radiation machines um it's sort of links to the big businesses pharmaceuticals oil and mining stock exchange monsanto bankers i mean they're all basically the same people <laughs> mainly and pharmaceuticals they just get a massive kick out of making drugs out of waste uh, phosphorus mining releases lots of fluoride oh isn't it handy that can be put in the tap water and toothpaste um, you know and then all their drugs I mean all their drugs have these awful side effects and you can't patent a herb otherwise these guys would have done to make sure they had the patents so, I mean, what they do is they, you know, extract an ingredient from a herb or they extract an ingredient from a clamshell or from fuck knows what. They'll, they'll use anything. I mean, that's their business. They look into what these things do. So then when you give this to a human being, this is not a natural thing. This is an extraction. So it would have been fine if you'd be given the whole herb we only give them given an element of something and you know you don't know if it's maybe even been grown in a like in a laboratory or something 
you know, so it's going to do a job, it's going to have an effect. Um, but then you've got side effects. Um, you know, how many people are popping aspirin? For what reason? They don't know. It's bullshit. And hopefully most people have learnt that by now. Just through the test of time, you understand what effects these things have on you when you've been around for <clears throat> score and tenure <laughs> score and ten thousand plus three thrice tut. okay right so the world is in a pile of shit we have to accept that the world is in a massive pile of shit isn't it can that be denied? All the, a lot of the truths I've just told you are, are, are awful. I mean, mass animal deaths, public health going down the toilet, wars, earthquakes, weather, <laughs> comets. Right, it's in a bad, bad way. And here we have all the areas that we look up to all the powerful departments and they're telling us fucking lies religion church government or whatever they are educational schools the hospitals the courts the places we spend all our money big businesses why are they lying to us well I could go in and say all the lies that they're saying, but most of it, most of what you hear is probably a lie. You only have to apply a little bit of common sense, and you also need to have started out on the correct truth path to detect the lies. So, do that. An experiment with truth, Gandhi, that's what he called his book. An experiment with truth. Just be truthful and see what happens. Okay, so now I've brought you down into depression. Let's look at the bright side. <clears throat> now I've also put on this truth here, four other things. Truth. Life. Life is truth. You know, while we're alive and we're trying to figure out what's truth and lies, one thing we do know is that we are alive. So be thankful for that. Yeah, it's something to be thankful for, especially if you've come close to death, then you suddenly become very thankful for life. And you don't need much. You just need to be alive and you think, oh, that's lovely. So we are alive. Next one that I'm going to mention is karma. Karma is a truth. And um, it doesn't seem to happen to everyone. Some people seem to be able to get away with bad things. But believe me, they are just putting off the inevitable. How are they putting it off? They're not remorseful. They're not um, believers in good, perhaps. Some, you know, whether people do deal with the devils, I don't know. I think they probably do because I've, I almost, I had a decision like that once in my life back when I was about 14 or 15. And I felt the temptation of the dark side and I flirted with it for about half an hour. I don't know, maybe not even that. And then I told it to fuck off. <laughs> I did. Right, so karma. That is a universal truth. Karma will come to those. Come to all. No one can escape it. Maybe you can delay it, but you can't escape it. Another good thing. The words Jesus said, because I put religion in the lies box. There are a lot of lies in the Bible, and I've said it before. Uh, anything you read in the New Testament with Amen in, in mentioned, I can assume this is 
added later, made up. Doesn't. It's quite interesting to see the ones where our man isn't mentioned. James, Jesus' brother, very near the end of the back of the book. And Jesus, when he says the Lord's Prayer, doesn't say Amen at the end. So, the words Jesus said in the Bible are superb. And um, we could all live by that, couldn't we? And that would be good. So the next truth I put up here, you know, I was thinking of writing God, but <clears throat> I think it puts too many people off. It kind of starts a comment. And it's true because God makes you picture a man or something. Or a woman, an entity. Now, I don't think the creator of the universe is a single entity. I think the creator of the universe is all of our souls put together. Um, so, I've written intelligent universe. The fact is, you don't have to really know what it is. Only that you're in it. You can, even if you can't feel it, you can feel it. You're in the intelligent universe, and the universe has a will. It does have will. Things happen to you in your daytime. This is God stroke intelligent universe showing you what you need to be shown. So, so yeah, lift up. So, with that said, why does the world have to be in such shit? Okay. So now, we start. This is the call for all you human beings out there who understand and feel with me of what I've just said. That, to be honest, we don't need to be ruled. Not by any person. If you go back to the Old Testament... When God and when Moses and the Israelites were getting on absolutely fine, then they wanted a king. And up until that point, they just had prophets who would come forth to them and tell them what God had said if they were erring in their ways. They never listened to the prophets. The prophets were always right, but they learned anyway. We, and God warned, he said, you do, don't have a king. If you have a king, I will judge you all by your king's actions. So when they had a good king, God treated them well. But when they had a bad king, God <laughs> treated them bad. So what would you rather have? Would you rather be judged by your own actions or would you like to be judged by the actions of somebody else who probably doesn't even know you because he's the king and he's so few and you're so many well yeah anyone is going to answer aren't they much rather be judged by our own actions okay so we don't need any rule and you will see now on this piece of paper where I've written. Now, I'm probably I'm gonna try and get you into the mood of it. Okay, this is a little bit, little bit poetic, not really my style, but I'm gonna read on the on the left. How many people can you get to know really well? If you were born and grew up with a community of 150 people. These would be the people you love most in the world. It would be wise for a community to let their young adults flee the nest for a period, five to ten years perhaps, to travel and be accommodated by communities. They will be pleased to hear of things from afar. And he too, <laughs> he too will see new sights and wonders. So if that was a bit confusing. The community that the person is travelling to would be keen to hear of things from afar. What people can achieve when they are free. 
So uh, that may have not made any sense. But you have to imagine this, say, a hundred years down the line. People have had no rule. It's been peaceful. Communities have lived and died. So those being born into the community never knew anything else and the ones raising them hadn't known anything else and they were self-sufficient. They made all their own things. They talked to their surrounding communities. When they were in their 20s they travelled around, met other people. <laughs> Loved, laughed, played, danced. And who knows what would be achieved? Who knows what? We only have to just go back to what I was saying a bit earlier about everything that's wrong and all the, the lies we're being fed to know that it must be better than that. We educate our own kids pretty well. Mothers and fathers, they educate their kids what they feel they need to know. The school stuff. We leave to the school because it takes time to teach them to read. I mean, help them to read, but to add one or two. You know, I'm happy to teach them that, but the school do that. But I think the reason I'm happy to leave them at school is just because it's with other kids. And that's what I got from school. It was being, being with others you know learning how to get on in your peers and everything else now school can be cruel and you know you can you can have you know you can have nasty things going on but in a community you'd have more adults around and they'd all be part of the community anyway so but if you remember at school the feeling of being in a classroom of 30 kids that you knew pretty well it was a pretty good feeling compare it to now most people have probably at some point experienced a bit of loneliness that's why people are always referring to the school days as the best days of their life think on that <clears throat> just think about it just think keep thinking Sorry, it's annoying. Okay. All right. So, um, so I've also written on here self-sufficient, which I'll get into in a minute. And, um, I've also written there unconquerable. Um, now I've just read... Niccolò Machiavelli, The Prince. I'm sure it's on the reading list of many Eton boys. <laughs> they will have read The Prince. You can bloody bet your ass on that. And um, they probably read The Art of War as well, which is also what he wrote. But um, The Prince he never meant actually to be public. It was sent to a high-ranking family, I think in Italy or something. Now, uh, he's basically telling this family, because he's, he's worked in governments and politics before, he's basically telling this family how they would run a successful kingdom um, or republic. So, um, it's very interesting, and it's... it's um, it's not surprising to me. It's very, it's very intelligent. I mean, to put it in a nutshell is probably a bit difficult. But you've heard of Machiavellian ways, Machi, because it did become a phrase as soon as this came out. All the church and everything, they sort of, you know, called him an idiot or whatever, because it's quite sadistic in a sense. Um, I can't. I'm not going to just try and put it into words because it's pretty succinct in itself. But let's say it goes through what well, well, the main chapters. I'll just read the chapters. Uh, how many kinds of principalities there are and the way they are acquired. 
on hereditary principalities, on mixed principalities. Why the kingdom of Darius occupied by Alexander did not rebel against his successors after the death of Alexander. How cities or principalities should be governed that lived by their own laws before they were occupied. See this word occupied. They're talking about occupying places. Our new and, and then holding them and um, our new principalities acquired by one's own arms and skill. Our new principalities acquired with the arms of others and by fortune. On those who have become princes through wickedness. On the civil principality. How the strength of all principalities should be measured. On ecclesi ecclesi ecclesiastical principalities. On the various kinds of troops and mercenary soldiers. On auxiliary mixed and citizen shot soldiers. A prince's duty concerning military matters. I mean, none of it's that depressing. I mean, I, I think it's, it's sensible, most of it. On those things for which men, and particularly princes, are praised or blamed, on generosity and miserliness, on cruelty and mercy, and whether it is better to be loved than to be feared, or the contrary, how a prince should keep his word, on avoiding being despised or hated, on whether fortresses and many things that princes employ every day are useful or harmful, how a prince should act on acquire esteem. Blah, blah, blah. I actually haven't read the last few ones. Anyway, that's probably quite boring now. Um, I'll tell you one thing from it that is just fresh in my mind. Um, how a prince should act, act both as a lion and as a fox. You have to be brave as a lion and cunning as a fox. Because if you're only as brave as a lion, you will not see the traps. And if you're only as cunning as a fox, you will never be able to lead as a lion. <coughs> but, um, you know, this whole thing about leading, and it's talking about studying great leaders who have won. Most of the great leaders have, um, have never been sincere. They would know when to break a promise, and they would do it quite often. And some even got a real big kick out of being deceptive bastards. Um, the thing about the, being a leader is, you know, you've got a leader and then somebody else wants to be the leader. And... I think, you know, we should just be able to have what we all want, which is control over our own lives. And OK, if you're in a community, you might not want to do what the other want to do, but it kind of would work better if, you know, if you grew up in that community. So, you know, there'd definitely be some teething problems at the beginning, but... We all kind of want the same thing, really. You know, we all enjoy companionship. We obviously need to eat and drink. And we need some sort of shelter from the cold. This is what we need. And I need to see the stars again. Just threw that in there. Okay. Unconquerable. Oh yeah, so why is it unconquerable? Right. Machiavelli, when he's saying how to occupy the places, would um, stress this importance on being able to win the people um, because they are many. So if you can't win the people, you can't govern the land. It was pointless invading it in the per first place. So he's like, you know, if some far off land which is well governed and the people are happy, you forget it. You'd have to, to get it, you'd have to kill everybody. That's the only way you could get it. And you know, who wants to rule a place where everybody's dead? Right? So <clears throat> this system here would be unconquerable. Because who is going to be able to invade us and then 
expect us to be happy living in their way. So they're not going to bother. But someone might take it upon themselves to want more, take a machine gun and go and spray out a village. And this is where I said we would need to be courageous and we would need to endure hardship. That might happen um, if we don't prepare that well, but if we prepared for this proper, properly, it shouldn't happen. But if it did, we should never ever give up the resolve. Never ever, never ever let them do that to us, make us fear, never. And if we connect with the intelligent universe, we will be okay. And why do I say that? I just, I can feel it. You know, the universe wants this. We, as humans, we've been We've been led astray for too long and it's about time that we we come to our senses. Now if someone's thinking this is a depressing thought, being in a community and blah, 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 just you know, just just have an open mind. Now Just to stay here, right? Transfers would be allowed upon agreement from both communities. So, you know, people could, like, move. And obviously, you might fall in love with someone in another community. And you'd give up your community to go and live in their community. And you'd do that as an act of love. I can't see any other reason why you'd why you'd leave a community and this is the way it's worked naturally in a chimpanzee group you know there will females will will leave will leave the community they'll go off looking and they'll be taken in by another one it happens naturally and I think the size is important <clears throat> which I, I've done a video on before Called, well, called the New World Order. The first video I put on YouTube is about this. This is what it's about. Now, I don't like usually repeating myself, but I did want to put this across again. And um, so the size for human group, 150 plus or minus 30. And that stops the group becoming too big and dividing or too few and scattering. All the communities would be equal, except for whatever they get out of life and put into it and get out of it. You know, it would be down to them. They're, obviously, some land is going to be slightly better than the other. And I guess, you know, that's, you know, that's got to be done right from the start. It's got to be a fair allocation of land. And... If, as I say here in step one, you take the oath, I will do unto others as I would have done unto myself. That should also make you think about somebody else's predicament. So if you were next door to a community and they had a bit of a landslide and lost half their land, you know, you'd kind of have to be neighbourly, wouldn't you? And help them out and perhaps... <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know, you get... The, get it changed oops so there's something I've missed <laughs> what if that happens shit well I don't think the land by the sea is very good land anyway maybe that you know you wouldn't be too close to the sea you know you just you wouldn't obviously have to fence it off it would have to be more of a a rough <laughs> I don't know it never be. It wouldn't be easy, but it would be good. And um, hierarchy in the community by age. So the eldest, 
leads. That's that's just the fairest way. Twice daily communication with surrounding communities. Five years to repair. Step one. Plan the allocation of good land and useful property to the population. All who wish to remain, take the oath. I will do unto others as I would have done to unto myself. We don't need these leaders pilfering our lives. <clears throat> we are the herds of muscly cows in the field who could easily go and run over the farmer. If the farmer was pissing the cows off enough, they'd run him over. He gives them just enough to keep on. And that's like us. We're being farmed. You want to continue like that? The princes, they stand on the mountains and survey the plains. We, the workers, stand on the plains work on the plains, gazing at the mountains. Well, I want the freedom to be able to work on the plains and gaze at the mountains and then walk up the mountains and gaze at the plains. <laughs> right? We do not need to be herded. We do not need to be led. What do you do? You say no rule. No rule. We don't need it. If a political party gets formed under the name no rule or anarchy for us with a proper plan how to implement it and ensure that all are free and equal then we take it by the will of the masses. It would be brilliant if England did this. Wales, they'd love it. Scots would love it. The Irish would love it. The French would love it. <laughs> Germans would hate it. No, the Germans would love it. Yeah, there's a problem. There's too many bloody people in the cities. That is a problem. Should have been addressed before. Should have been done in the 70s. But it wasn't. It wasn't meant to be then. But it has to be now. Now or never never for the human race I heard a NASA comment I think NASA even though they're bloody liars well, the worst ones they tell you a little bit of truth and a little bit of lie but they uh, they've now said you know every star has planets revolving around it I mean that's something I've thought on my own years and years ago I'm sure many others have done too but now they've come out and said approximately you know a fifth of these will have an earth like planet in the Goldilocks zone so there you go there's um, say just say out of a hundred billion stars say in our own Milky Way a fifth so that's 20 billion yeah, 20 billion Earths. Awesome. 20 billion Earths. Hmm. Wonder how many have a society as evolved as we are. Hmm. Wonder how many have a society much more evolved than we are. Ooh, it's got to be a few, isn't it? I mean, maybe we are the first. Maybe we are. But that's slim. And um, <clears throat> they're probably just waiting for us to sort ourselves out. Well, if it wasn't for that fucking devil having um, 
nuclear weapons aimed at us to stop them from uh, intervening too much. I'm sure they would have done something to help us. But no, we have to do this on our own. And um, if we did this, would the devil want to fire a nuclear weapon on us? Yeah, probably. But can we can we let him control us through that sort of fear? No. So let's do it, people. Come on, what's your face? Um, Brand, Russell Brand, you can start this off. <clears throat> I'll help you out with some of the details. If you get stuck, <clears throat> but your face is famous enough, you can do it. Let's get this thing going. All right. Love ya. Bye.